Hey folks, welcome back to Only the Best Fantasy Novels. My name is Robin, and today I want to talk about a pretty fun standalone fantasy novel, and that is Guns of the Dawn by Adrian Tchaikovsky. So, this is a book that's been making the rounds as a pretty beloved um, entry from him in particular, and after reading it, I can see why. Like, this is a pretty marvelous book. Um, so, what's it about? Essentially, we have the Kingdom of Denlan, that was it, the, the monarchy faced the coup, and a populist rebel group managed to take control of the government. Unsatisfied with the fact that the neighboring Kingdom of Lascani has a thriving monarchy, they attack, and this forced the Lascani king to basically conscript an army. First he called up all men of fighting age and then he changed the definition of fighting age so that older men and younger boys had to go to the war front and then as they kept losing he started calling up women folk to fight um, and serve as soldiers and that is how Emily War Marshwick, the heroine of this particular novel, makes her way to the war front and when she arrives there she's thrown straight into the just the terrors of war and it's going to take all of her skill to survive and more importantly to figure out what the hell is going on because not everything is as it seems in this war um yeah i think that's a pretty good summary of the book um what did i think of it so adrian tchaikovsky is an extremely prolific author i don't think like i'm fairly sure by now most people who are taking the time to watch this video would be quite familiar with just the length and breadth of novels that this guy writes like it seems like I, I would say he, he could give Sanderson a run for his money and that every year it seems like he has three or four releases coming out just in a wide range of um of subgenres within the sci-fi and fantasy categories and um in Guns of the Dawn we get a good taste of just how creative he can get because Guns of the Dawn is first and foremost a fusion of epic military fantasy, flintlock fantasy, whatever you want to call it and of all things Edwardian romance um, just to give like a, a brief hint of what kind of vibe we're talking about here the Edwardian period would have been that period just before World War One, where um like they they still the sensibility was still very much that this aristocratic um this this kind of aristocratic um so socialite society kind of thing but it was transitioning to a period where women had a bit more agency um due to the depredations and the demands of war um but yeah anyway um th this is this is kind of the two major elements that combine this that make this story and he it's crazy that he could take these two things and craft such a well done book out of it um i don't think he could do it if emily marshall herself wasn't just such a engaging main character like she's not the she's not the prettiest girl on the block she's not the smartest or anything by that nature she's just like essentially a regular person who happens to be minor nobility in a rural family um, but it is a family that has like deep tight deep ties to the monarchy the Lascani monarchy like there's some family history there and that kind of thing um, over the course the novel is essentially split into two parts where Emily for she navigates this situation just, just daily life as a civilian in the war um, with her younger brother going off to war and kind of trying to keep the household afloat with all the shortages and, and these kind of things and even dealing with some semblance of the aristocratic socialite society scene at that point um, like she's by by no means does she have as many gentlemen callers as her sister who it seems to be much more desirable but she um she there, there there's some interesting things that crop up here and there um like for example if you're if you're uh of the if you're interested in the whole enemies to lovers um trope this book may be something you may want to consider um, if you're into that kind of story um, 
not that that's a spoiler, that's just kind of one of the running plot threads throughout this book. Um, and the, the whole will they won't they, I, I'll leave it to you to, to read and find out if they end up, how that end up, how that ends up playing out. Um, anyway, so there's that aspect to it, the Edwardian romance kind of aspect to it. And then there's the whole, like, full-on epic military fantasy, because this book, from that roughly halfway point where the conscript gets expanded to include women and Emily Marshall gets picked, um, or I should more rightly say she volunteers um, as part of it. Like, it, it becomes a very much a military story. Like, um, she's treated like every other soldier, you know, and um, we get pretty much everything you would expect to, to see in a fancy novel. Like, we we have, like, just the, the worthless bureaucracy, INEP command, just the terrors and the horrors and the utter stupidity of it, the utter waste, the utter senselessness, all of this is all perfectly captured in this aspect of the book. Tchaikovsky also includes, and did and trigger warning by the way, um, he also includes scenes that are very, very realistic for, um, for young women who are suddenly in an army where there were no women before, where there's um, there's like multiple attempted sexual assaults and these kind of things, um, and yeah, like um, <laughs> it's it, it's just fascinating how he took these two completely disparate elements and just put together such a well crafted just just this wonderful story. Like this guy, not only is he a prolific writer, he's also a very good writer. Like, this is my third, I think my third Tchaikovsky fancy at this point, and with one exception, I, I've absolutely enjoyed two of them. The, um, the first being House of Open Wounds and now this. Um, so yeah, like, just wonderful writing. A, a brilliant fusion of two completely disparate genres to create something new and exciting and fun. All driven by just a wonderful main character. Like um, she, she does the best that she can. She's not like super great at everything. She's not, um, you know, she's not the best. But she, she's going through life and she's, she's having her experiences. And it's just fun to read her, um, just how she handles these, these things. As pretty much like a regular person, essentially, even as one who's like minor nobility, um, which is not that much of a. There are some moments where it works for her throughout the book, and there are definitely some moments where it works very definitively against her through the book. So it's not like she's some kind of special snowflake just because she happens to be like this minor nobility. So there's that. In terms of like the plotting of the book, like there's um there are some scenes that didn't quite make sense, like at over the course of the book like it felt like they were unnecessary or they didn't contribute anything and then as you read further into the book you realize how they come into play um how they set the stage for different things like it, this is a pretty chunky book but it utilizes all that space everything was for a reason everything serves a purpose so you can't really complain about it in terms of pacing it's not frenetic but it's not slow either things just keep rolling um Tchaikovsky doesn't waste time on to he, he doesn't waste time on non-essentials, like he just keeps things going. The world is slowly introduced to us as the as these characters face different situations and the yeah, the plot unfolds essentially. Um the characters we're not we're given just enough backstory to know who they are and what their um and what their place is in this world. And then as the novel progresses we find out more about them and we find out more about their particular their their, their idiosyncrasies basically um so they're they're very well fleshed out like it's actually been a little while now since i've read the book and thinking back on them i can easily like there's multiple cast members that immediately jump into my mind as um and not just that like they're defining traits the parts they played in the story but it they're like they're well fleshed out, they're well fleshed out. Um, so there's that. In terms of world building, this is very much a secondary fantasy world. Um, there is some amount of magic in it. One of the big, one, one of the more fascinating aspects of it is actually the, um, the, 
the way the magic works in this kingdom of Ascani, which is the only kingdom that has magic, by the way, the opposing kingdom has technology, which makes for a brilliant clash. That, that was actually one of the other elements that he included in here that was really fun to read, how magic would hold up against technology. Um, and just like the... the, the there's just so much, um, so much going on in here. There's like... This book is very much a, a, a book that examines, it, it looks at the pointlessness of war. It looks at how techno, uh, at how societies change as a result of it. It looks at how, the, it looks at the consequences on both sides, the, win, the winners and the losers. It looks at just the pointlessness of it all. It looks at magic versus technology, not in the sense of, oh, Magic is just technology that's not understood. But what would literally happen if magic and technology were to go head to head? Um, it looks at the sense of security that these long held traditions give as compared to something that's new and dynamic and, and unfolding. Um, and just and, and the role of innovation in these and creativity in these kind of things. Like it's just and all through all through it, it just it also highlights the, the role that people, the human element plays throughout all of this. It's just brilliantly done. I, I enjoyed it immensely, as you can probably tell. Um, so yeah, like, um, I, I saw this making the wrongs as, you know, one of the, a, a really good epic fantasy to read, one of the best standalone fantasy novels out there. And I agree, like, this book was fun. Like, it's fun, it's got a lot of depth, there's a lot of moments throughout here that you can't help but enjoy, you can't help but smile, you can't help but laugh. And it it's a book that manages to incorporate just so many different things without it feeling overboard or over bloated. Like there's humor, there's tragedy, there's horror, there, there's a, so much stuff. Like th this is definitely a book you want to pick up and read and you should pick up and read. Like it's it's crazy. Like <laughs> it just blows my mind that Adrian Tchaikovsky can put together something with this much baked into it and still be as prolific and creative as he is. Like, I would, I would honestly consider this book a must read um, just because of how creative it is. Like, it's definitely one of the better genre picks out there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about Guns of the Dawn. Um, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.